All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This week, uh, I'm in Gomes, Switzerland. Right now I'm in the Matsus cabin. See, got a lot of skis. Holy. <laughs> Looks like they've been working hard. <laughs> Little ping pong table setup. All right, anyhow, this week, I think I'm gonna do a little ski this morning and then maybe get somebody to uh, interview this afternoon. Hopefully a Swede, I texted uh, Johan Hagstrom, so hopefully he's free and we can, yeah, learn a little bit about him. He's been with, racing on the World Cup for a long time with Team Sweden and various other achievements, so I think it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say, but yeah, in the meantime, I'm uh, getting ready to go for a ski here in Switzerland. I have some new, exciting stuff from Team Matsus, some custom insoles for my boots. So put those in, take, go out for a ski, see how they feel. Yeah, and then we'll go back and uh, maybe see about a little interview for the rest of today's video. So should be a good one. Calvinesis Lab. It helps you out. That feels really good. I feel like a new man. So I'm super pumped for the ski. We'll uh, see you guys out there. Ah, uh, there's that Swiss view. All right, well, fantastic for a ski here in Gomes. It's pretty, pretty nice here. Unbelievable, actually. Insoles, felt insanely good. Jessie Diggins, maybe some of you guys have heard of her. She's been telling me for years to get some custom insoles for my uh, ski boots. She says it helps with balance and power transfer and stuff like that. And you know, I was always like, yeah, I got no problems when it comes to balance, but <laughs> I will say, now that I've tried them, it's, it's pretty revolutionary, so. If you're looking to solve some, some foot problems in your ski boots, definitely something worth looking into. I'm, I'm really psyched about it. And huge shout out to the good people at the Matchuse Racing Department for helping me get that set up in Tron time. It's uh, a, real, a real treat to represent them and uh, it's pretty awesome when they go the extra mile to make things work. So anyhow, heading back to the lunch hotel now. Uh, that's the home, right, the American flag and everything, look at that. Grab some lunch and then come up with some good content for you guys this afternoon. Stay tuned. Let's hear that. Yeah. Sunglasses. Yeah. Do you need sunglasses? No. It's all right. Welcome, Johan Hagstrom. Thank you for uh, being. This is for my YouTube channel. Thank it's really, you. Really, really bustling. Uh, tons really of subscribers. Really fun to be, be here. Yeah, I'm glad. And uh, yeah, I was just thinking. So you grew up in a small town in central Sweden, right? Yeah, like in the northern Sweden, I should say. Northern. Yeah. yeah nice. High up by cool. the coast. Yeah. Cool. What? Where, where was it? Uh, Lilla Lavtesk is their village. It's like eight houses. Okay. Very straight by uh, a town called Kali. Nice. So. Cool. Yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit about like growing up there and like you know the relationship with skiing, like within your family and within the like community? Uh, it's quite a lot of snow up there. So yeah. it was in a small village. Also, it was like snowmobiles and right. skiing right from the start. Yeah. So I guess I didn't start like competing, skating right. straight away. Yeah. But I had to like convince my parents to drive me into yeah. the town and <laughs> nice. be in a ski club. Cool. So I maybe was like 10, I think. Cool. When I was starting to be at trainings and stuff. Yeah, nice. But uh, before that, I was just skiing at home. Like, yeah, cool. Like snowball bike. Yeah, yeah. And uh, having fun in the snow. Yeah, nice. That's cool. That's a good way to, I feel like a good way to develop a positive relationship with. Yeah, yeah. It was like racing. And I thought it was fun. Yeah. And if you're motivated yourself, that's yeah, fun. yeah. And when you're quite good at something, yeah, you always like it. So. Yeah, especially when you're young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you're a bit behind or yeah, before the other guys, then it's fun. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I remember that definitely. But uh, yeah, so like as a, did you go to high school there? No, I moved up to Yellowar. Yellowar. Yellowar yeah. has had a few World Cups also. Yeah. But they have a quite good uh, high school there yeah. for skiing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kalla went there and right. Helner, yep. there, those are maybe the biggest names Cool up there. Emma Rebo yeah, of course. was also there. She's pretty famous. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was maybe the best years. Yeah, yeah. Like we went for four years high cool. school. Yeah, yeah. We just trained and having having fun. Yeah. Not too much studying. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that Because our high school is like on three years. Right. 
but then you go on four years up there when right. you're at. So, so it's nice and slow pace. Yeah, yeah. In terms of you school. had nothing last year, <laughs> yeah. so you just That's too awesome. much free space. To yeah. Do other things. Yeah, cool. What like what when you're in Yalavari, what like did you do other than like between training sessions in the summer and whatnot? Did you have like hobbies and stuff like uh, that? I always enjoyed like doing sports. Yeah, like, everything. Nice. So both the uh, backcountry and uh, yeah, like playing soccer. Right. All all things with a ball. I yeah, guess. for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So uh, it's been a lot of that. Cool. And it was, it maybe was the first time when I moved from that small village also. Right. Where I could be a bit more close to soccer, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Places, like more people to play with, and stuff. Yeah, more people. Yeah, nice. Also, so it was cool. quite fun to yeah get into a town. <laughs> yeah, I bet it was. That's nice. That was similar for me. Like I grew up in a really small town as well, and like you know, when you go to high school or, or whatever, or even for me when I went to college, like there's a lot more people that are sort of your age. Yeah, it makes it sort of fun. To uh, like, yeah, do other things, make soccer a lot more fun. When yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Just you and, stuff. and for sure, training also. Yeah, and training too, definitely. Uh, like training with someone. Yeah. Uh, the last years, people starting to do other things also. Like yeah. Dropping the skiing, or when you're like 16, 17. Yeah. They are starting to doing choices in your life. And, right. Um, to get in a group with those who think similar, similar yeah. is uh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, it makes it really fun. Yeah, cool. So then, like, fast forward a bit to, like, when you, according to Wikipedia, you've been racing on the World Cup for eight years now? Oh, is it that long? I don't know, so to yeah, say, yeah. starting in 2015, I I, yeah, or 2017, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it was, I don't know. My first World Cup was in Rizalm, I think. Oh, Rizalm, yeah. Yeah, I got some reminder, like, on the phone. Oh, yeah. Days ago. Yeah, nice. I had Bib 1, <laughs> oh, and I remember I had, like, the biggest, uh, I was... Like afraid of going to start oh, because yeah. I had so bad shape. That right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like third, last, or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy fun. Yeah, so much was, people. Yeah, uh, racing at, sort of at home too. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it was maybe twenty five. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Be. So like in in that time, we'll say yeah, about eight seasons, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. Um, like I know you've been on and off the national team in that time, and I was just kind of curious, like. You know, in the U.S., the, the national team selection is really important, um, and it and or it is, it is, and it isn't. You know, it, it racing yeah. on the World Cup off the national team is a challenge, and I would, would be kind of curious to hear like you talk about, you know, your time <clears throat> off the national team versus on, and, and how you sort of have navigated those those challenges. I was, I guess, I was quite a few years outside the team also yeah. before I got. got quite good yeah so it was maybe five years right without being mm -hmm. at really high level yeah and uh, then you also have like starting to know how to to get good yeah you know what you need to totally progress every yeah, yeah. year so yeah. Uh, yeah I guess if you ski fast in Sweden right. on the winter yeah then you go out and compete then it's like ordinary then it's right not a big difference yeah totally but uh, on the summers is the biggest. The summers the biggest. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then, then we have quite a few camps with the Swedish yeah. team and, yeah. and like training with the best. Yeah. It's also, it's key. Yeah. Yeah. And also, for sure, the economic right question is quite much better when you're like in the highest team in Sweden. Yeah, totally. So the first year was maybe the biggest. Then I was like in the B team. Right. Yep. Uh, and then it was just that I got to train with the best and like see what totally what everyone was doing. Yeah. And then I think I took a quite a big step yeah. with that, both with resting and uh, yeah training, right. training harder or better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that was fun. And then for sure that then I took the step to the eighteen. Right. Yeah. And that was that was the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been there three or four years. Maybe. Yeah. Nice. Last year I was outside the team. Right. Uh, it was, it was a bit of a struggle. Yeah. First, like, right. first to go outside, then you right. have to like find Fun again and, yeah. what I needed to do. I knew what I needed to do in training. Right. Yeah. But uh, it's always to get all the camps together and yeah. who you're going to train with. Yeah, um, that's tough. And the economic. Right. For yeah. Sure, so. Yeah, but you receive a good amount of support from your club, right? Yeah. The club yeah. is really good also. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. Always been good. Yeah. For me. Nice, uh, and and yeah. they support like uh, when you're racing at home, right? Yeah, 
so we can compete in Sweden yeah. without any expenses for yeah, ourselves. Yeah, that's like, nice. So that's good. Yeah. We also have like training caps once a month almost. Right, yeah, uh, okay. At the summer yeah. with that team. So that was also a relief, you right. know, you have yeah. them in the back. You have to be able to go to that. Yeah. yeah, even if you need money for the salary, for right. like the apartment and, and stuff. And the travel and everything, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. it was, uh, then you have personal sponsors who right. will really help you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, like uh, in the US, I think it's almost the opposite. Uh, when you're outside the national team, like the summertime is okay because, and I think it has a lot to do with the, just the geograph geography. Like yeah, Sweden so is very far small, apart, apart yeah. everyone. Yeah, exactly. And and the U.S. is huge, so we don't get together for that many training camps. Yeah. And when we do, we make sure, often make sure to like open them up to anybody, you know, because like yeah. if you're only going to do two training camps a year, you might as well like try and make it. You know, available for a lot of people. So I think and it's always good to raise like the level. Yeah, also, exactly. Yeah, it's, and it's good for everybody. More people there. Yeah. Someone is good at like running uphill. Totally. Then it's good to yeah. have them there. Oh, absolutely. But then, yeah, in the U.S., like the the challenge comes in the winter time because we're away from home so much. Yeah. You know, it's really expensive to uh, to not have the support of the national team. But anyhow, it's interesting to hear like your yeah. trajectory and, and. I've tried your life now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been home since Trondheim, I think. Yeah. Okay. So that's right. I, I noticed you guys didn't go home after the tour. Yeah, I stayed up in Lavase also. Yeah. To get a few more days at altitude. Yeah, nice. Uh, thinking a bit about Canmore also. Yeah. It's gonna be mm-hmm. a bit higher. Yeah. So uh, it's a uh, it's a nice life. Yeah. No. Can't where, complain. I mean, you, we're doing just fine. You but... kind of forget you have something at home. So. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it it almost makes it like really fun to go home. You yeah, know? yeah. When you've yeah. been away for a long time, like it all the stuff that you sort of take for granted, you're like, oh, I kind of appreciate this now. Yeah, you know? exactly. You know, you've raced a lot of sprints over the years, and I'm always curious with, like, you Scandinavians who are so good at, uh, like, tactics, how much of, like, when you go up to the line in a sprint heat, like, how much are you planned, have you planned, or are you just sort of, like, making decisions on the fly, if, if that makes uh, sense? Quite a, mo- quite a lot of, uh, like, on the fly. Yeah. You always have a like ground id right you have first yeah plan mm-hmm. uh, that you want to be like first on the last uphill totally. or something yeah and uh, always tries to follow it yeah but it's always hard with <laughs> right strong guys around yeah and everyone wants the same thing yeah or thinks the same thing yeah but uh, i think we usually tries to have like a really good plan before yeah what what we want to do if we want to take start or right if we can take a bit easy in the start and mm-hmm. go for the finish instead. Yeah. But uh, it's always hard to execute. That's the yeah, problem. Yeah, sure. <laughs> definitely. But uh, I yeah, think I have a plan. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always think it's interesting because uh, you know, especially like when when uh, like when I came to the World Cup, he, the heats were such a hard thing for me to like wrap my head around. Yeah. You know, it was just so hard for me to like make decisions that were advantageous while it was happening. Um, and I think that some of that is just because or comparatively with a Norwegian or a Swede who you know maybe in their second or third World Cup starts it's like in the semis and and whatever and I think that like part of that must be just like experience you know like you guys have raced a lot of tight races over the years and yeah and and I think that's from also when you were a kid maybe yeah there are more kids that are skiing right perhaps and yeah. the tighter races all totally. the way and mm-hmm. then you learn how to compete yeah against others yeah like a crowd but it's not everyone who has it either no for sure it's some people, more yeah more like a sprint thing i think yeah that sprinters are better in crowded right because they can take these small gaps and yeah and sort of capitalize when they didn't expect to yeah and, stuff and like more that. distance guys some of them yeah for sure are a bit worse than that Definitely. i guess <laughs> yeah so but it took a few races for me also it didn't go straight away when i yeah like you heard, I was third last, maybe the right, first yeah. World Cup. So, yeah, totally. so I did a few World Cups before yeah. you start to get a hang of it. Right. But, uh, it's a lot of like trying also. Right. Uh, that you testing new things, and you're yeah. just learning by doing. Yeah, totally. Uh, and in the beginning, you're you're also starting to like look who is around. Right. And that's always a bad thing also. Like yeah, totally. Oh, there's 
clap up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Then I follow him. Yeah. And then then you're screwed. Yeah. You can follow another guy. You have totally. To do it like your own thing. Right. I always think to myself that like my best performances in sprints are when I just like go to the start line. I don't even really know who's in my heat. You know, I just go there, and I have a plan. And if I can stick to the plan, then great. And if not. I just make decisions, you know, and, and, and just navigate through as opposed to sort of like fixating on, oh, like yeah, yeah. there's so many fast guys in my heat. They're they're all better than me at double pull. They're all better than me at V2, yeah. whatever it is, and, and like fixating on, on my weaknesses, you know. And you're, you're not thinking of your strengths because you yeah. don't think they are enough. Exactly. That's, yeah. Then you're screwed. Totally, <laughs> yeah. And it's funny how like, you know, for me, I've had races – where like I've been in that state that like headspace where I'm just able to like be confident in my own strengths and and capitalize and then I've been in races where I've just not had enough faith in myself and just like let people like just do it go all over me yeah and I think it's sort of funny like you know my, in my analysis is that the best in the world don't have don't let that happen yeah. you know they just do their they just do their thing every solo time solo everything as they go yeah also and it's really remarkable yeah. i mean it's crazy like it's always like thin marginals yeah uh, and if you have bigger marginals yeah. you get better then it's easier to fix everything right. on totally. the way also totally yeah so if you're like on the stretch of going through right then you have to stick it perfect yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but if you have a bit of uh, like a gap to the others right then you can fix it anyway yeah definitely so, that's what we were trying to do. I just um, remember your like crazy heat in Valle yeah, last year. Yeah, exactly. It was so sick. Yeah, I was that dropped was... in the first tap, first tap. <laughs> uh, you got me for that though. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got you back, but <laughs> that was no, crazy. that was a fun one. Yeah, that was one where I just was. That was a time in the season last year where I just was like, I'm going. <laughs> I was so sick of like tactics, you know so. of the tactics and of like waiting until the last hundred meters and getting out sprinted, you know? So I just like, I, ha- I was like, I had to try something new, Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And like, it still didn't work for me, but I got to the end of that and I was, was, like, and I, was I was so close now. Yeah. Getting you, so it was... I was happier than what I was if I had just, you know, tried to be smart and whatever, you gotten, make it in the, gotten that. fifth in the, in the final sprint. So anyhow, I don't know, but it, I think again, like the best in the world, like they don't, they know how to capitalize on their strengths, but also, but they, but also like, limit other people's ability yeah. to, to do things, you know? And they never get stuck. Okay? Exactly, yeah. They, they are always got a, like, yeah. escape route. Right. If they're in the middle of the field, they always get so they can go yeah. out or, yeah. like, they're never trusting on someone else. Right. Like, yeah, totally. staying in a bag mm-hmm. that are too slow or too... Yeah. Yeah. They're never always, yeah, ready to go out. On the yeah, road. yeah, so for sure. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean it's interesting. It's and it's a real like. I mean, it's kind of the fun of being a like professional athlete. You know, like you, those are the things that you have to worry about. You know, yeah. trying to figure that out. It's like kind yeah, of yeah. cool. Can't you be frustrating. Too. Yeah, and you always get another shot. Yeah, which so, is cool. But you can get really frustrated. Like, yeah, you can get so frustrated, especially in sprint. I think you can be like feeling like it's your best mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah, and then you come to the quarterfinals and. Mm-hmm. Just mess, mess everything up. Totally. And oh. go straight out. Yeah. And it's super sucky that you can. Yeah. But move. it kind of motivates you for next weekend. You want to go show how strong you are, but it's hard. Right. You know? Yeah, totally. That's why it's just good old individual start race is kind of nice sometimes. Yeah. You just so go out there. And like, races is for sure more. Yeah. Like if you're strong, then. Totally. That will show. Yeah. Do you have an idea of what you would like want to do if you weren't racing? Like. Like for uh, a job or what would you do? I've, I've been studying. You've been studying, yeah. yeah. What are you studying? Uh, I'm not studying now. I have like a break. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so I'm supposed to be start starting studying again. Nice. Like this fall or or autumn. But uh, I'm studying to like an Indian air. Oh, nice. Yeah, I so, maybe you told me that. Yeah, so I will probably continue cool. on that. If yeah, yeah. I'm, Feel I'm finished. Yeah, yeah. With the skiing, yeah. so it's good to have something. Yeah, totally. Like, to fall back on. Yeah, nice. But uh, my main focus has been skiing. Yeah, all totally. Along. Uh, yeah, yeah. For sure, I've have doubts. Yeah. If I'm going to be really good, like in 23, 24 years old. Yeah, yeah. And you saw there was a long way to the top or to yeah, the World Cup. Either, definitely, so, yeah. But uh, that was good to 
have some studying and yeah. something else to focus on. Yeah, nice. I think it's super nice to just like help with help with your mind and like be a little more relaxed and yeah, have sort of other things going on. But, but yeah. it's been crazy nice these last two years also. Not yeah, studying at totally, all, just totally, yeah. focusing on yeah. training and relaxing. Nice. And doing fun stuff also. Yeah. Like we have time to. Yeah, I mean, it's not like an all consuming thing. I could have time to study also, but it's. Yeah, it's but nice to relax. Also. Don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, sweet. Uh, so, do you think you'll be interested in getting a job engineering afterwards? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nice. That would be really, really fun. Yeah. Some of my sponsors also are a bit connected to those. Okay. That is nice. So it would be really fun if I could like link it up with getting in. them helping me and yeah. getting back and working sweet. for for them maybe. Yeah. So that's kind of my my goal too a little bit. Yeah. Like, like working for sponsors or, or I don't know, something. just like, you know, there's this big long t chunk of time when you're like not, you know, like I, I got my bachelor's or whatever in engineering, graduated a few years ago. Yeah. And now like there's this big chunk of time where I'm not going to be like getting experience or whatever. But I feel like the way I can, I can capitalize is by just like meeting people and talking with my sponsors and, you know, whatever. And eventually that'll lead to some opportunity, you know, it, oh, yeah. I think. And, and that's a good way to sort of get get hired and get start doing something that you're psyched about, you know? Yeah, so. and this is quite a good, like, education also. Yeah, for sure. We are quite motivated yeah. individuals also. Yeah. So I think most jobs should want a skier yeah. who's going out trading every day. Totally, yeah. Or two times often. So mm -hmm. then you... You want something in life also. So right, yeah, exactly. That would, at least some yeah. jobs would want that, I hope. Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I My last question I had written was, like, you know, if you were interviewing for a job and they said, well, you've been, had this 10-year chunk of your life where you weren't in school, you weren't yeah. getting a job, you weren't getting experience, blah, blah, blah. Like, why do you think you're a better candidate? Because of your time as an athlete? And I think what you say is exactly right. Like, yeah, I think... Like, we're, you can't say we're working, like, out in the sun always. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's still hard work. Sometimes. It is hard work, yeah, most days. Uh, sure. we, and all... most days, is not, it's not always sunny and beautiful. Some days it's pouring yeah, rain. Yeah. And we're working go with, a, yeah. with a goal also. Totally. We want something, yeah. and we have, yeah. we have achieved results. Totally. Even if it's, yeah, yeah. we're not the best in the world no, no. yet. Or, yeah. But uh, we're still... Uh, part of the road that, yeah absolutely so. and, I, and i think that like i always think to myself like in the eyes of uh yeah like some an employer or something like it's not really about whether or not you became the best in the world you know i don't know it's about whether or not you like had a goal and and worked at it every day yeah, yeah. you know because like you yeah and, and like obviously it helps to like be claybo and have a million world, yeah, yeah, yeah. world championship medals or whatever but and also like you know if, uh, yeah if it would be hard to get a job also, we haven't had a bad time these 10 no, years. No, yeah, why, for sure. Why should we have yeah. like done something else then? No, if 100%. We enjoy being out trading. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Doing this. I agree. I mean, it's such an awesome opportunity. Like, yeah, who cares? It's hard it? to do something else. Yeah, no, I agree. So Sweet. I think those were the thoughts who like, kept me going also. Yeah, when definitely. I was 24, 25. Yeah. Like, what else am I gonna do? I yeah, can study totally. a bit, but yeah. I want to ski. It. It's yeah, super fun. So for sure, then I would work for it. Yeah, a bit more. Like. You know, sometimes you start thinking, oh, it would be nicer to, you know, not travel as much or whatever. But every weekend, I look forward to the yeah. races. Like the races are so much fun, and like seeing meeting people and yeah. you know, seeing the beautiful parts of the world that you know it can take you. Like we're so lucky to do it, and there's really so yeah. few drawbacks. So fun with this meeting people also yeah this like these last years been super good with that also yeah i think so uh, i think we've been we've been doing a good connecting sure. more and more yeah the whole world cup totally yeah uh, the years help also but <laughs> yeah for sure up. but i mean still it's it's easy to uh it's easy to just like go out and say hi to people and yeah, you know, yeah. again maybe you get a job out of it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah maybe <laughs> that's maybe. my goal cool well thanks okay. for thanks for coming and uh yeah Watch out for Johan Hagstrom on the fist app, people. Yeah. He's, first, a, uh, he's a real one. First leg on uh, Friday. Yeah, dude, me too. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> there. Really man, the first leg of the relay is the best. It's just all yeah, the yeah. classic skiers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. We'll be fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem.
Okay, well, thanks for watching. Hope that uh, interview was interesting and feel free to leave a comment. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> feel free to leave a comment in the uh, comment section if you want to see interviews with more people, what kind of questions you want to see, how much noise JC is going to make in the background. <laughs> yeah, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you guys in the next one.